Hey Liz, come here. Hey, um, Sunrise is on TV. No way! Live from Main Street, St. Charles, Sunrise presents a very special Christmas Eve celebration. Join our faith family as we listen to Christmas music performed by the Sunrise Praise Team, hear from local mission leaders, and experience an unexpected message from Pastor Jim Blue. Pastor Amy Luttrell is live on the scene. Well, hello, friends. Thank you so much for joining us. We are so excited about worshiping this Christmas. Can everybody just say hi? Hi. hi. Thank you so much for being here with us. Today, we are gathered to do two things, to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this Christmas. I'm so excited to do that with you in community out here on Main Street, and also to raise some awareness about all the wonderful things that Sunrise is doing in our community uh, with local mission. The band is getting ready. They're, they're practicing over there. Um, under the porch and it's going to be a great night and i also want to let you all know that um, every bit of generosity that is collected on christmas eve services whether they are online or in person is going to go 100 percent to support these local missions that we're getting ready to talk about so uh, again i'm so excited it's going to be a wonderful night thank you so much for joining us and i have with me here andrea Phila, who is our director for food for hope and more so andrea can you just tell us what is food for hope and more so food for hope and more provides local youth with food and essentials to take home each evening during holiday breaks and on summer breaks via a normal looking backpack um, to be able to provide a quick and easy meal for themselves and their families that is so awesome. And what school districts do we serve? We currently serve um, the school districts in St. Charles County, Warren County, and also in St. Louis City. Wow, that many. Yes. Wow, that's so cool. So um, it's Food for Hope and More. Did they do anything to help you know, during the pandemic? We did. We were very busy. Um, during the COVID pandemic, when all the schools closed, we weren't sure what we were going to do, but we knew that there was a need for food. And over the last 18 months, um, we were able to provide over 2,000 full grocery bags full of food to our fa fragile families. Just from Sunrise people? Just from Sunrise people. Wow. Yes. Um, and we were able to come together as a church per family and provide these bags to groceries um, for these families that were not only a blessing to the families, but a blessing to be a part of. So what are our current food needs right now for Food for Hope and More? So currently um, our, our pantry is really low. Um, we've went through a lot of the food over the last 18 months. Like I said, 2,000 food bags is a lot, but the need is still there. Wow. We're still making close to 40 to 50 bags each week. Um, and currently our needs are peanut butter and jelly, cereal, snack crackers, hamburger helper, and um, pancakes mix and syrup. All right, well, there you go. You've heard all those needs. If you want to donate any of those, feel free to do that. And Andrea, why do you think this is such an important ministry for Sunrise? So I believe that this ministry not only is important for um, those that we provide food to, but also the volunteers and, and myself leading this ministry. Um, it blesses them with food, but then also us being able to bless them as well. Um, and I wanted to take a, a minute just to read a thank you note that we got oh, yeah. um, from a teacher at Wright City High School. I have no doubt that God uses his people to bless others. Your donations bless so many of our kids. It also teaches them how to give back. Please know that we do not take all that you do for granted. We appreciate you so much. And I think a note like this from one of the teachers just explains exactly why we're doing what we're doing. Amen. Thank you so much too for your leadership in this important ministry. Thank you so much for your generosity. Guys, Sunrise is live streaming on Facebook. We know we're watching it on YouTube. <laughs> and it just brings so much joy to so many. That's why Jesus came to the world. I invite you all to join and worship and singing with me now as we sing about Christmas joy.
I love it when God's people worship and sing together in community. And you know what? I have a special announcement for our online worshipers. Starting on December 26th, we will be live streaming once again, our 9.45 a.m. worship service. So when you are worshiping, yeah! When you are worshiping online with us, it will be exactly at the same time that our in-building folks will be worshiping. And it's just another way that we can be a little bit more together and in community. So I'm excited and moving forward after that. So um, stay tuned and, and be ready for that. And now I have um, another really, really wonderful and important Sunrise local mission and it's Serve Saturday. So Tom Navo is the director of Serve Saturday. And uh, Tom, can you tell us what is Serve Saturday? Well, Serve Saturday is an event that's held one time each quarter of the year on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Um, it's, it offers volunteers of all ages and skills to help others in need that are in the local community. And what local organizations do we typically partner with? Well, we're currently partnering with several local or, uh, local organizations. that They've kind of become regulars on our Serve Saturday project mm -hmm. list. Um, some of those are Strong Tower Ranch out in Wright City, mm -hmm. Sparrow's Nest in O'Fallon, Sharon Shed in O'Fallon, our own uh, Sunrise Meal Ministry. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. That's just to name a few. And, you know, we're always looking for new ideas for, you know, if you have those ideas, you know, reach out to us and we'll always take them. Yeah, that's another way people can get involved yeah, and be in mission together and in community. Um, can our whole family participate or what ages is this for? All ages, uh, so we usually try to mix it up. We have events that you can sign up as an individual. We have events that you can sign up, you know, like your small group can decide uh -huh. to tackle a project. Mm -hmm. We try to have one project for the youth yeah. And then a project for younger children to work alongside adults. Oh, I love that. Yeah. To get them started early. Yeah. Yeah. An example of that for uh, February, the, the next Surf Saturday uh -huh. in February is uh, we're going to have the young children with their, uh, you know, whoever they're working with um, make Valentine's Day cards to hand out at Del Mar Garden. Or oh, Atlanta. cool. And while we're on the February one, what date can we put on our calendar if we want to participate in the next Surf Saturday? February 12th. Um, Sign-ups probably early to mid-January, so let's get them all filled up. Yeah. yeah, so just so people know kind of what they're being a part of and how big it is, how many service projects would you say you guys have completed in the past three years? Say over the last three years, 60 approximately, wow. which involves over 300 di different volunteers. Wow. Yeah. And we, we couldn't really do it without the volunteers. Yeah. So, you know, Serve Saturday would really wouldn't exist. So, you know, thank you to people that feel it in their heart to, to do that. Thank you so much for leading this important ministry. Thank you so much for your generosity that goes to support all of these ministries. Like I said, all of the generosity collected on Christmas Eve, whether online or in building, is going to go toward our four different local mission ministries. So thank you for your participation in that way as well. And we have another opportunity to lift our voices and sing and praise and worship together.
much fun. We are having so much fun out here. Thank you for worshiping with us. And you know what? Honestly, we are still going to be out here for a little while. So if you're at home and you want to come out and join us, we just invite you to hop in the car and just join us. We have Can we go, please? Yeah, please. Sure. Uh, Sure. Yay! Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> and I would love to introduce um, Christy Park. She's going to be telling us a little bit about Sunrise's Neighbor Helping Neighbor Ministry. Sun uh, Christy, what is Neighbor Helping Neighbor? Well, Neighbor Helping Neighbor provides comprehensive care to families in need. Trained volunteers establish relationships with these families so they receive consistent and supportive care to help them break the cycle of living in crisis. What kinds of needs do these Neighbor Helping Neighbor families typically have? Well, we really address the specific needs that each family has. Sometimes it's transportation, sometimes it's utilities or rent, sometimes they need job resources or they're between jobs and struggling with housing or medical needs that they can't afford by themselves. That is incredible. How many people do you think our Sunrise Neighbor Helping Neighbor program has helped? Yeah, we usually get to know more than 100 hurting families per year in our community. And most of the time we provide folks with other community resources that they weren't aware of. And mm. sometimes we understand that the one-time need can propel them to meet their goals and mm. get their feet underneath themselves. Yeah, cool, cool. So, Last question, why do you think that the Sunrise Neighbor Helping Neighbor Ministry is such an important ministry in the church? It's really important that we focus not on just on meeting the need, but meeting the people. Mm. We pray together, celebrate successes together, encourage them and provide the kind of support that large government organizations don't usually have time to provide. Mm. And an example was a single mom who had lost her service job during COVID, then lost her vehicle, mm and was afraid to lose her apartment, mm. we connected her with several job resources and one of our direct lo local employment connections worked out. Mm, that's awesome. And yeah, she wow. called us one day to let us know she saved up enough to buy her own car. Oh my God. And we have hundreds of fragile families just like that one wow. in St. Charles County. And it's a blessing to be a part of this journey for each and every one of them. Mm, thank you so much for your involvement and in how you support Neighbor Helping Neighbor. That sounds so impactful. And um, if, if you would like to donate, there are different ways that you can give. You can go online or through our app to those secure platforms. You can also donate by sending a check in the mail. Um, if you just wanna write Christmas Eve on it, it'll go toward all these wonderful local mission ministries. Thank you all so, so much. And we have another opportunity to lift our voices and our hearts together in praise and worship. Would you join us?
Amen. Amen. I love worshiping outside, gathered together in community with our online community. It is sacred. It is holy. Jesus has come to bring so much hope and joy and love and light. And I invite you at this time to lift up your hearts with me toward God and pray along with me. Would you pray? Lord, here we are. We came to bring our praises and our hearts to thank you and worship you. Lord, you have made such a huge difference in this world, in our families, in our communities. And Lord, you are continuing to make a difference. Your kingdom is still coming on this earth, Lord, to spread the love, the peace, the joy that sometimes we feel the most around this Christmas season. Thank you for sending Jesus to bear the sin of the world, to be our savior. We give you praise. And Lord, so many of us have so many things that we have on our hearts as we are processing through yet another holiday season, we lift them up to you. We ask for you to come in our families, come in our lives, come in our churches. Lord, continue to come and bring the hope and the healing that you bring. And together we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trust against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 I would just like to introduce one more local mission ministry to you and let you know a little bit about what it is. I have with me here, Christy Filla, who is the director of the Christmas Depot. What is Christmas Depot? Well, it's a program. We try to help families during the holiday. Mm -hmm. They come in and they get everything at a greatly reduced price. Mm -hmm. so we don't simply collect and give. We partner with the families. Mm, I um, love that. Yeah, and so then they have an opportunity to actually provide a Christmas for their children. Mm. And where do you, how do you determine which families right. can participate? Um, so we have social workers within the school districts uh, on the lookout mm -hmm. for families who are, who are hurting, uh, who are financially struggling. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then they give us their names we, and we connect up with them. Also, we have, um, certainly within our own church, we have the Neighbor Helping Neighbor Ministry. Mm -hmm. There are some families there. So, um, you know, they come from a few different sources. There are families that randomly call the church mm -hmm. looking for help as mm -hmm. well. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so why do you think Christmas Depot is such an important ministry at Sunrise and how can people get involved? We received the greatest gift humankind mm -hmm. had ever known mm -hmm. and so it's kind of like thank you mm -hmm. <laughs> it's our give back mm -hmm. to yeah to, mm -hmm. to thank um and the best way we do that is gift gifts okay. do you have a personal story you'd like to share about a family uh -huh. that's participated in christmas depot well the families are all fun and they're all great and they're so grateful but I have to say, it's the volunteers hmm. that really inspire me. So many of them said, this was such a joy. I got to actually connect with people. Yeah. And certainly this last year and a half, yeah. you know, it, we've been missing it. And to see that what God does with the multiplying mm -hmm. of the blessing by, you know, an effort that we're making yeah. is I just love it so much. Yeah. What a blessing to so many. Thank yeah. you for sure. all the hard work of leading and organizing and it coordinating so that you do. Thank you, yeah. Sunrise Family, for mm -hmm. just continuing to support and, and be a force for good and a light in the community. All right. Isn't it fun to be out here worshiping together? And yay. At this time, I wondered if anybody might be willing to volunteer to read the scripture for today for us. Oh, Natalie! Sure, come on up. 
Thank you so much, Natalie. It's already marked for you, the Christmas story in Luke 2. Okay, thank you. Thank you. In the second year, after Israel's departure from Egypt, on the twelfth day of the second month, the clouds lifted from the tabernacle of the covenant. So the Israelites set out in the wilderness of Sinai and traveled from place to place until the clouds, clouds stopped over the wilderness of Paran. When the people set out for the first time, following the instructions that the Lord had given through Moses, Judas's troops led the way. They were joined by the troops of the tribe of Issachar and the troops of the tribe of Zebulun. And the tabernacle was taken down and the Le Levites were taken in the next line of march carrying the tabernacle with them. Reuben's troops went next, marching behind their banner, and they were joined by the troops of the tribe of Simeon and the troops of the tribe of Gad. Next came the Kothaites division of the, Le of the Levites, carrying the sacred objects through the tabernacle. One before arriving at the next camp, the, the tabernacle would have already been placed and set up in its new location. Ephraim's troops marched next, marching behind their banner, were joined by the troops of the tribe of Manasseh and the troops of the tribe of Benjamin. Dan's troops went last, marching behind their banner, serving as the rear guard for all the trivial camps. They were joined by the troops of the tribe of Asher and the troops of the tribe of Naphtali. This was an order in which the Israelites marched division by division. Thank you so much. Can we hear it for Natalie? All those hard words. Wow, there, there were lots of hard words in there. I, that was actually a bit unexpected. I think I accidentally turned to Numbers 10, but you know what? Everything in the Bible points to Jesus. Amen? Amen. So um, thank you so much. You're and Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you. And um, at this time, before we, we finish out our worship time together, um, I just want to invite everybody to take out their smartphones and go to your app and where it says worship check-in. Go ahead and do the worship check-in. You could also do that online. And then yeah, I would love it if you'd go to our YouTube channel and make sure that you subscribe on our YouTube channel and like and follow and share on Facebook and comment um, so that we can know that you're worshiping with us and we can be a part of community together. Friends, wow, that was probably not the scripture you expected to be read at a Christmas Eve service. Yes, yes, even at Christmas Eve at sunrise, expect the unexpected. Now, one of the longstanding traditions here at Sunrise, uh, even before I arrived way back in 2004, was this time of year, the Sunrise Preschool would hold its Christmas uh, pageant. And I'm just curious, uh, folks online, uh, if you had children that were part of the preschool, you can drop over in the comments section, yes. Uh, folks in the building, if you want to raise your hand and say, I had children in the Sunrise Preschool, you may remember this. Uh, the, the old school used to be called the fives class. Now, this year, it's called the full day pre-K class. And they were always the last part of the Christmas program for our preschool. Uh, and the reason that I was so excited, because I had a part in it. I was the narrator. And they told the story of Christmas. Yes, there was Mary and Joseph uh, there was the innkeeper, there was an angel, and of course there were, there were the shepherds and borrowed from Matthew 2, the wise men, and they shared the, the story of the nativity to their parents and grandparents and, and everybody that was in the room. Now, things change, and the, of course last year we didn't have a Christmas pageant because we didn't have preschool in the building, and, and so they made an adjustment uh, to the program this year, which cut out one of my favorite parts. Uh, you see, in the old school day, they, kids would start in the back of the room and they'd sing this Christmassy secular song. And then I would stop, almost interrupt them and say, wow, kids, that was great. But do you think the folks here know the true meaning of Christmas? And then we would say and do the nativity scene. So I want to ask you, 
right now on this Christmas Eve, do you really know the true meaning of Christmas? Yes, I know this is the season about God coming to earth in human form as a baby, Emmanuel, God with us. But this is the time of year when we celebrate that God is breaking traditional expectations of those who are waiting for a Messiah. 2,000 years ago, uh, the Jewish folks in, in Palestine were waiting for God to swoop in. Well, well, actually, they were waiting for God to des descend from heaven and foot touch the pinnacle of the temple in the city of Jerusalem and, and using power and might uh, get rid of the Roman occupation and usher in a time with, with a, mil a military and a political power that would bring, bring peace to the people of Israel and would restore them to the dominant force that they were in the world under their great ancestor, David. The promised Messiah, the long-awaited promised Messiah would, re would remove the burdens of the Jewish people so they would experience freedom from oppression and enjoy peace and prosperity for the rest of their days. All these expectations were expectations of long-standing tradition. And then, then God chose to break traditional expectations by intersecting human history in the form of a baby, not a political leader or a battle-ready warrior. The Messiah was born in the most unexpected town, in tiny Bethlehem, not powerful Jerusalem. The baby was born in the most unexpected place, in a lowly stable, not in an elaborate palace. The baby was born to the most unexpected people. A working class couple who were engaged, not a properly matched and married set of royalty. So do you really know the true meaning of Christmas? Or, or maybe she ought to say, have you, have you really experienced in your life the true meaning of Christmas? Not the trees and the tinsel, uh, not the pageants and the, and the nativities, not the endless strands of lights and elves on the shelf, not the songs and the cantatas. No, my friends, I mean experienced in your life, in the here and now, a deeper meaning of Christmas. Okay, I, I bet you're probably still wondering about this unexpected passage of scripture from the book of Numbers in the Old Testament written some 1300 years before the birth of Christ and not one word remotely fits into any prophecy about a baby, a Messiah, or somebody named Jesus. So how does a passage describing marching orders for the wandering Hebrews fit into a Christmas service that, that should be all about Jesus being born. Remember? Expect the unexpected. Oh, I agree. I agree. No matter what you may be thinking, I agree that we must celebrate the birth of Jesus today. It is the most important event in history. It's the event that sets our modern calendars into motion. And yes, we all know that that baby was born, grows into a man named Jesus. And we know that Jesus on Easter Sunday celebrate his resurrection from the dead and victory over sin and death. And in reality, that alone should answer the question of what the meaning of Christmas is. Amen. We can go home. Yet, I can't help but think there is, there is more, much more to the true meaning of Christmas than Jesus' birth and his death. More than Christmas and Easter. And yes, more than all the Sundays that do ex exist in between. There is more, much, much more for us to experience than two dates on the calendar or two seasons in the year. Okay, have I, has I, have I drunk this out long enough? Or do I have you in suspense sitting on the edge of your seat about this passage of scripture? Or am I about to ruin your holiday spirit? Just exactly how does Numbers 10 
fit into the Christmas Eve expect the unexpected message. Well, it requires a little bit of backstory if you give me a few moments. The Hebrews have escaped from Egypt after hundreds of years of slavery under Pharaoh and previous Pharaohs. Their work resume from, from the least to the greatest was simply brick makers and small scale, small patch farmers. Now free from the bondage in Egypt, there were a million or two plus people traveling back to their ancestral homeland with all of their possessions in tow. Numbers 10, as we read, was set a little bit over a year uh, into their journey. God had been masterfully using this time to begin their transformation from slaves of Egypt to servants of God. During that time, they'd built a tabernacle, a large movable tent that was constructed and used as a place to, to house the Ark of the Covenant and other and offer sacrifices and worship to God. The tabernacle was elaborate, ornate, and always occupied the space dead center in the Hebrew camp. Now, you can imagine with this many people traveling uh, through a wilderness area, they would certainly stir up some major dust. Kind of think Pigpen from Charlie Brown's Friends. You know how you always had a cloud of dust of him? It, it would be impossible for them to quietly slip or tiptoe from one spot to another with that many people. They would quickly draw the attention of all the inhabitants in the lands that they were trespassing through on their way to the promised land. Now, one such group that they had regular clashes with was the feared Amalekites, a band of ruthless, highly skilled, military warriors who became the relentless enemies of the budding nation of Israel for generations to come. Now, the standard practice of ancient groups traveling through foreign lands was to put your best warriors in the front to meet any potential enemies. Think Braveheart. And by default, the weak, the widows, the orphans, the defenseless were left to bring up as best they could the rear of the clan. Many nations, not Israel, but many nations viewed these folks as expendable. A noted tactic of the warring Amalekites was to circle around back and attack their enemies from the, from the rear, slowly and methodically moving through the least protected, and the most vulnerable right up to the final battle with the best of an army could offer. As could be imagined, this gradual reduction in numbers produced opposite psychological results for both the Amalekites as well as their enemy. Remember, we're talking about expect the unexpected from God. Listen closely, friends. In the ordering of the marching clans that was read by Natalie, the clans listed in, num in Numbers 10 is God's way of providing the ultimate protection for the Hebrew people. The equally competent and best warrior trained clans of Judah in front and Dan guarding the rear was only part of God's strategic plan for his people. The weak, the widows, the orphans, and the defenseless were strategically placed in the middle of this moving convoy. Think the rocking chair and Smokey and the bandit. The most vulnerable in the community of Israel were completely protected on all sides at all times. Now imagine the surprise of the Amalekites when they discovered, when they attacked the rear, that good military people were back there. It took away their surprise. Friends, this is the Christmas message that we need to hear. The rabbis of the Jewish faith have long stated that you can tell the true heart of a congregation by where they place the weak, the widows, the orphans and the defenseless within their community life. 
Are they completely protected on all sides at all times? Or does the community of faith go about its business without care or concern for others, thinking more of self than anyone else? Jesus taught about the importance of taking care of those extra needs of people. The gospel writers recorded his words. The early disciples demonstrated. And the first century church was founded on the importance of creating a safe and strong community for everyone. James 1.27 says this, Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. Yes, friends, Christmas is a great time to express our love and our care and our concern for others. Uh, it just seems to, to come more naturally uh, during this time of year. But what about in July? When, when the, there are no sparkling lights or decorated trees to spur us on in our generosity for community protection. Are we a true community of believers who protect those who are in need of protection 365 days of the year. So let me ask you again, do you really know the true meaning of Christmas? Yeah, we know it's Jesus's birth and it leads to Jesus's death and our salvation, but that's otherworldly. The true meaning of Christmas has to have validity while we are still here. So let me ask you, have you ever experienced in your life the true meaning of Christmas? Are, are we a group of people who are willing to lean in together that looks out for the well-being of others and then provides for these people's needs? They become a community of believers that are really experiencing and living and sharing here and now the true meaning of Christmas. So you might ask yourself, how might you today on this Christmas Eve continue to experience Christmas throughout the year through the opportunities to be part of something different in this community of faith? Remember those great ministry opportunities you just heard about a few moments ago uh, where we reach out into the community and we make a difference in people's lives? Uh, how about those? Where might you plug in as a protector of the unprotected in the shadow of our steeple and in the shadow of your mailboxes? We represent a God who is always breaking traditional expectations. Yes, friends, it's Christmas Eve and we are to expect the unexpected. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among the shepherds and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will be great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem in the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those whom God has pleased. Friends, Jesus is the gift of hope and joy and love and peace. Jesus is the unexpected gift of ushering us into a real community of faith where we protect those who need protection. The greatest Christmas gift we can receive or give is being the gift of community as part of the community. Because born on this holy night was our Savior, Christ the Lord. Let us pray. God, as we come here this evening, how how amazing it is, Lord, in the Old Testament, 1,200 years before Jesus was born, you already had a design in mind for us today in the church to be a community of faith who protects the people who need protection. 
Lord, we are, it's not about us. It, it's not a singular faith that we live in. It is the celebration of community. Jesus came so that all could be saved. Jesus came because God so loved the world, not just you, not just me. Lord, we come here today and, and maybe we need to confess that we've made it too much about us. We, we've had blinders on. We've not thought about those who stand in need. Maybe we have during this time of year, Lord, but, but what about six months from now? What about three months from now? What about nine months from now? Lord, may we still have the same passion of helping people that we do right now on this Christmas Eve. Lord, we pray that in your name, amen. So there you have it. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for your generosity. Uh, all of your generosity collected will be going toward Neighbor Helping Neighbor, Food for Hope and More, Serve Saturday, and the Christmas Depot here at Sunrise. Thank you for your participation and ongoing support of those mission and ministries. And I just want to invite everyone for one last song to raise your voices and sing and worship. Jesus comes to save the world this holy night, this holy night. Jesus comes to give us sinners shining light. Jesus comes to save the world. This holy night, this holy night, oh, and Jesus comes to give us sinners eternal life. And in a manger, this baby boy, oh, a miracle, a miracle. From that baby boy, Christ the King, Jesus comes to save the world this holy night, all oh, this holy night. Jesus comes to give us sinners eternal. Christ the King, all ye people, come behold Him, He's our Savior, Christ the King, born to rescue, we adore you, Jesus Christ, our newborn King.
Thank you so much for joining us today. May the light of the Christ child continue to make a difference in your life and draw you in to the community of Christ. Would you pray with me? Lord, pour out your blessings this day on these people, all of the people who are worshiping online with us, on demand, with us wherever they are, and those that are gathered today. Lord, give to us the joy of our salvation, the peace and the hope that only you can bring. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Go in peace. That was the best Christmas ever! <laughs>